Mr Chowdhury to open the debate for around seven minutes. Mr Chowdhury. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The eyes of the world are on us here in Scotland. As the 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP26, took place in Glasgow recently, parliamentarians, world leaders, campaigners and civil society activists were all gathered together with a commitment to tackle climate change. And it was a privilege to be able to attend some of the events associated with COP26. There is no doubt everyone has a part to play in response to the climate emergency. And in this debate today, I hope to be able to highlight some of the commitments in, in the Glasgow Food and Climate Declaration. This declaration brings together all types and size of local authorities, from small and medium-sized towns to megacities, districts and regions, territories, federal states and provinces, to speak with one voice in renewing their commitments to develop sustainable food policies, promoting mechanism for joined up action and calling on nation, national governments to put food and farming at the heart of global response to the climate emergency. The declaration was developed by Nourish Scotland in partnership with IPES Food, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations FAO, the Global Network of Local Government for Sustainability, the Under Two Coalition C40, the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact, and many others, and was presented in Glasgow City Chambers during COP26. I commend the City of Edinburgh Council and West Lothian Council as two of the Lothian Regional Local Authorities which have signed up to the declaration. On behalf of West Lothian Council, as one of the most recent signatories, Councillor Kirsten Sullivan emphasized with me how the declaration builds on strong partnership work with the West Lothian Food Network, which is committed to removing the barrier to accessing food, as well as recently agreed food growing strategy in the West Lothian which looks at how food is grown in the local communities. Integrated food policies and strategies will be key tools in the fight against climate change. And I know that other members will be able to give accounts from their own regions of the steps being taken in this regard. The Scottish Government is also to be commended for becoming the lead signatory of the Glasgow Food and Climate Declaration. Uh, the Scottish Government and growing number of Scottish local authorities are amongst around 100 current signatories to the declaration. Alongside regions such as Coimbra in Portugal, Catalonia in Spain and Cross River status in Nigeria, cities such as Sao Paulo, London, Washington, Paris, Vienna, Milan, Coito, Vancouver, and most recently, the government of Honduras. I'm pleased to be able to bring this declaration and all that it stands for to this chamber. Looking at the decisions taken at COP26, while uh, important progress was made in many areas, we should, not, uh, we should note that uh, food si system were not on the presidency agenda, despite accounting for around 30% of global emission. The COP26 agreement did include some com uh, commitments on farming. 45 countries pledged urgent action on making farming more sustainable, as well as the commitments on uh, methane signatories promise to invest in green agriculture uh, practice in protecting nature. The UK government stated that it is aiming to, uh, for 75% of farmers to engage in low carbon practice by 2030, while Germany promised to lower emission from the land used by 25 million tons by the same year. 
I would be help, uh, it would be very helpful if the ministers today could indicate how the Scottish Government will support Scottish farming in achieving the goals set out by the UK Government. There are many examples around Scotland of the efforts being made to contribute to tackle the climate change. And I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate one of the award winners at the recent RSPB Nature of Scotland Awards, which was brought to my attention. The winner of the Food and Farmer Award, sponsored by the James Hutton Institute, was Kinklund Organic Nature Farm in Angus. The, the focus of this award is to demonstrate that it is in the power of Scottish farmer to farm their way out of the biodiversity crisis by placing environmental and biodiversity consideration at the heart of management decisions. The food system is hugely complex, so joined up food policies are essential to deliver on many different goals. Dignified access to good food for all, restoring nature on the land in the sea, improving health, tackling, tackling climate changes, creating good jobs throughout the supply chain and building stronger communities. The Good Food Nation Bill introduced to Parliament could lay the foundation for this joined up food policy in Scotland, although it needs to be strengthened. The cross-party support from the right of food bill as proposed by Elaine Smith MSP in the previous session and brought forward again by my colleague Rhoda Grant uh, also shows the support for action now. As the rest of the economy decarbonise, food system will, be, will account for an increasing proportion of both Scottish and global emissions. And we can expect food to be the higher up in the agenda at COP27. Given Scotland's leadership role in, un, uh, in under two coalition of uh, subnational governments, I would encourage the Scottish Government to promote the Glasgow Declaration on Food and Climate over the next 12 months of the UK Presidency. In leading up to COP27 in Egypt, let us match this global action with strong, right-based, good food nation bill at home. A national food plan can only be effective if local food plans are developed too. And I hope for an assurance that local authorities will be involved in developing any national food plan. For our local authorities to take the steps needed in reducing greenhouse gas emissions from urban and regional food system. There needs to be far more support provided. And I look forward to hearing from the Minister on the steps that will be taken across Scotland to turn commitments in Glasgow Food and Climate Change Declaration into a reality. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed.